All right, I'm gonna double your productivity in Adobe Premiere. Just give me five minutes. I'm gonna give you five tips that are gonna change your life. You ready? Let's go. Okay, here's tip number one. A big part of video editing is cutting chunks off video clips. So normally what I do is grab a razor tool, slice a clip, then I grab my arrow tool, click on the dead space, hit the delete for a ripple delete. What if I said you could just put the playhead where you want and hit W? Or if you want to delete the first part of your clip, hit Q. Watch how fast I can clean up this timeline. All right, tip number two, advanced playhead manipulation. This one sounds more complicated than it is. It's awesome. You want to move your playhead around and you want to have really tight control? Check this out. You probably already know about J, K, and L, right? That just takes you backwards, forwards, and stops the playhead. You may even know about the down and up arrow short keys that take you to the next cut or the last cut. And of course, the right and left arrows just take you one frame at a time backwards and forwards. But did you know you can modify each of these key commands just a little bit to have even more granularity? One major thing you can do is just keep hitting it. For example, if you hit J and then you hit J again and J again and J, 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 J it's going to move backwards faster and faster in large increments. Now hitting the shift key is going to unlock your granularity. For example, when you hit the shift key and you hit the down arrow, instead of it going to the next cut on a specific track, it's going to go to the next cut on any of your tracks. Here, I'll show you. Same thing going the other direction. Okay, and shift right or left will step forward or backward five frames at a time instead of one frame at a time. Or if you hold shift and J or L, it's going to let you play through your footage at much slower increments. All right, you ready for tip number three? Woo the Logitech MX Master 3, baby. This is a video editor's absolute must. It'll set you back about 95 bucks, but I think it's well worth it. There's actually a link to this exact one in my description. Click that and uh, I'll get a little bit kickback. So, you know, that's pretty awesome. All right, so once you have the mouse, you're gonna wanna download Logitech's Logi Options software. Depending on your OS, you might also be eligible for the Logi Options Plus beta that's out there. Once you download and install one of those, you should probably consider creating a Logitech account so that you can save all of your button mappings and settings in case you ever need to use the mouse on another computer or maybe you'll get a new Logitech mouse one day and those settings might transfer over. Okay, I'll show you how mine's set up, but you can set up yours however you want. You have the option of setting each button to do different things in different applications. It already comes with some suggested settings for some of the most popular Adobe and Microsoft applications. So check it out, there's five buttons and two scroll wheels that you can customize. There's also this gesture button that gives you four additional customizable actions that you can access by holding down this gesture button and swiping the mouse left, right, forward, or backward. All in all, there are 11 things you can set this mouse to do that would otherwise require you to take your hand off of the mouse Find the key command or hunt it down in the panels and menus, which is a total pain in the ass. All right, tip number four, automatic scene detection. I've glanced over this option like a hundred times and one day I'd stopped and looked at it and clicked on it and said, oh my God, look what this does. So all you have to do is drag a piece of footage into your timeline like this, right click on the clip, select scene edit detection, and now you have three options. Automatically put cuts in between scenes, automatically put all of the sub clips into a bin and automatically create markers at each edit point. Or you can do any one or all of those three. Just think about it, you grab a video that's an hour long and now you have 50 different edited scenes that you can just pick and choose from. All right, tip five. I call this the volume adjustment layer. Okay, it's not really an adjustment layer, but it acts like one, okay? For years, what I've been doing is dropping all my clips into Premiere, cutting them up, individually editing all the volumes for each clip. What if I told you you didn't have to do that? What if I told you there's a truly hidden feature of Premiere that lets you edit all the volume across all of them and be able to individually manipulate the audio at the clip level? Check it out, it's literally hidden. Okay, what you have to do is expand any one of your audio track's heights, like this, until this keyframe icon appears. You'll see here that there's a sub-menu on it. So you'll click that, and instead of showing clip keyframes, you want to show track keyframes for volume. Now watch this. 
you can cut your video up however you want, delete sections, whatever, and then you can start modifying the track's audio as one single line. The cool thing is that it doesn't stop you from going back and editing your volume at the clip level. If you go back to that view for a clip, you can kind of counteract the effects of track level changes. Pretty freaking cool, huh? All right, there you have it, folks. If you like what you saw, consider hitting that like and subscribe button. And whatever you do, please send this to as many editors as you know so they can stop wasting their life, okay? Peace.